Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another wonderful part of my dear spiritual child letter from me, Agape Love himself. Yeah. Do you know what just happened on the last teaching? Creatures, you might call them aliens, from other planets, from the far galaxy, showed up here in the garden. I thought I was going to travel to them, but no, God, he did a wonderful thing. He brought them here. They don't look like the rest of us. That's true. They're kind of different, but they need to hear the words of God themselves. God is a wonderful God of creation. If you look at those things that are in the deep, deep oceans here on planet Earth where there's no light. You'll see some of the strangest creatures. And if you look at insects, you ever look close at a dragonfly? My goodness, this God is a God of great variety, imagination. He is a creator. And he has known my heart to reach out to the galaxies through black holes, out billions and billions and billions and billions of light years to other solar systems for there's creatures out there. I just watched another one, another movie last night called John Carter. It's about some kind of medallion. If you said certain words, you were sent through time and space, sort of a copy of yourself. And this guy went from earth to, I think to Mars. And there were some things there, some people that could change shapes, sort of shape shifters. I think they were demons in disguise. And they were telling this John Carter they had been there since before humanity ever began in the earth. And they just fed off of all the wars and killing. They tried to manage people. Very interesting. Called John Carter. I'm always looking for the spiritual behind things, Mm -hmm. the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I found it in that movie. And then last at the last teaching, God brought some of those creatures from other galaxies. See, I thought I was going to have to go to them. No, this garden is on every place. It's not just here on the earth. It's in the realm of the spirit. So he's bringing creatures. They may not look like you. Let's smile and say hello, welcome to the family of God. So let's get started with part number 58 today of my dear spiritual child letter. We're still in that wonderful section of the letter called spiritual discipleship. Remember, we were talking about having a treasure chest. Let me show it to you again. There it is. I decorated it, painted it. I was going to put it in a club where girls dance for men to have it as a prayer so they could put prayers in there. Never did it because I really wasn't supposed to do it. But I took the treasure chest and painted it. And then God used it for other purposes. (laughs) He is always changing. I have ideas. Boy, do I have them. And a lot of them are not right. Mm -hmm. But I was trying. Because they always thought you had to do things in the natural. to To get things done in the spiritual. But he took this treasure chest. That was supposed to be for prayers. And turned it in to show you. The treasures of knowledge and truth. Yeah, I took this into jails. And I would then open it up. And inside would be many things. Inside the treasure chest of Christ. The anointed king. That lived inside of Jesus, the dirt. Boy, sometimes that teaching gets messed up. But this is the treasure chest we're working on. To learn that we need to be students of spiritual things, disciples, in the name of Jesus. Okay? All right. Is everybody settled? (laughs) Even you new arrivals. 
Yes, this is the garden. You heard about it? You know me? You've seen me in your land? On your planet? Oh, my gosh. I guess I'm a world traveler, sort of. Travel the galaxies without a spaceship. Maybe it's like being beamed up on Star Trek. But I don't think so. My physical body doesn't go anywhere. I stay right at home. In fact, I'm in my living room. But no green screen. With a motion video by Pixabay. Yeah. But my spirit, it can go anywhere. So I guess I've been going because I've been praying to reach out to all the galaxies. Yeah, we see them through the Hubble telescope. Through the, There are billions and billions of light stars away. We think we're the only planet with people or creatures or life forms on it. Mm -mm. Now, the life forms don't look like us. But that's okay. We have lots of science fiction movies to show us. Star Trek did that. Star Wars. Yeah. The Avengers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We even learn by watching the Lord of the Rings. There's some evil creatures out there. They don't look like us at all. That's right. And then there's things. People live in other lands. They go through portals. I just saw that through something called Mythica. And the outpost. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Gods and goddesses. Temples. Portals. Oh, my goodness. Lands of ash. But there was always a paradise. And it's, it's just amazing. God's trying to help us to see beyond this little earth. And what goes on here that we can see with our natural eyes. So let's ask him to help us right now as we begin to learn more about spiritual discipleship. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing these wonderful living creatures from the far galaxies. Yeah. Thank you for taking this garden out to the galaxies beyond our belief. And reaching out to all life forms. Thank you, Father, that you love us all so much. That you care for us to know truth and light. And we thank Zoom Pro for where we're recording. And Pixabay with this motion video. This is sort of a futuristic, but it shows truth and light is everywhere. It's beyond galaxies in galaxies. It's out beyond the stars. And yet it's right here on the planet. Father, help us through your Holy Spirit, our holy teacher, that we will learn and grow and understand you, your kingdom of heaven spiritually, us in our spirit, in our soul, and our physical body. Help us. We are definitely in the darkness, in the ignorance about so much. Help us to be students of you and your word, disciples and followers, not just hearers of the word, but doers. Help us to study and show ourselves approved unto you, workmen that have been studying diligently, that we may reach out with our spirit, our heart, our prayers, our petitions, not just here on earth, but to others, other cultures and other races and nations and galaxies far beyond our understanding. Help us, Father. You're bigger than we can ever imagine. If we can see with our telescopes billions of light years back, still can't find you back there yet, but they're looking. And we can see the many galaxies, the billions of them, with suns and circulating planets and stars all through the telescopes. Father, take us and your word out. Free it from this earth through your Holy Spirit. Let your word go forth into the future. Prophesy it, Father. Bring it forth. Help us to learn because we got a lot to learn, Father. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, this is going to be spiritual discipleship number seven.
So let's pick up. First, we want to hear a scripture from 2 Timothy 2, 15, called Study to Show Yourself Approved Unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can he say that about you? That you're studying to show yourself approved unto God? A lot of people do in religion, and you know what they do? They sit and they memorize. They rock back and forth, rock back and forth. You know what you're doing to your biological brain when you're doing that? <laughs> Damaging it. Injuring it. Mm -hmm. That's not prayer. That's not how you learn to live and be a hearer of the word and a doer. Mm -hmm. Religion is not God. Mm -mm. He's not a religious God. He doesn't live in buildings built by bricks anymore. His name used to be there. But not him. He didn't have those buildings destroyed. He lives inside of a spirit that's inside the building of dirt, a human body. But he also lives in nature, the coming from the sun. Also, he lives in trees and life, his life force, his very creative I don't know what you'd call it, DNA. It's been perverted here on earth through Satan. Mm -hmm. But he's here. He's always speaking and sending out his word many ways, maybe through a cartoon, science fiction movies, poems. You want to study? Go study the Odyssey. Yeah. Three-hour movie on YouTube. Great about how man needs to learn. He can't get along with and live his life. And he's nothing without God in his life. Mm -hmm. Study ancient Egypt. Study ancient Greece. Study ancient civilizations before Christ came. Study the Vikings. They had a hard time. They were a mixture of the old way of believing in gods. And then Christianity came. New gods came, but the way they were brought was not right. It was unholy. Mm -hmm. Study the cross. Study this man named Christ Jesus. Study. Show yourself approved. So let's pick up where we left off. We had been working through many different things you were going to have to study and learn as a disciple. We had finished number 25 and picking up here in number 26. We need to learn the heart of the father, seeking his face, not his hand, learning his will, and then above all, to do his will. Number 27, learning to love, not the things of this world. Gold, silver, sex, winning, being the CEO, winning, taking, having just pleasure. But to learn and to know you are just passing through this world. And once you become born again and really mature, like Pastor Deborah, you're no longer a citizen of this world. And I was just asked that some intelligence agents from all around the world have finally discovered me. Yeah, I connected with somebody out on social media. They came to me in the spirit and said, who are you? Where are you from? I go, uh, my dirt's an American, but the real me, I'm from the kingdom of heaven. I'm an alien to this world. And I had to learn how to get there in my thoughts and concepts. So I don't just want to be entertained. I don't want to have fun and live like everybody else. I became a strong follower of Christ Jesus and his word. Number 28, learning what is a carnal mind. What is carnality? You need to learn. 
Number 29, learning what the natural mind is. Number 30, learning what a spiritual mind is. Like the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Number 31, learning how to endure all things in the Lord. Number 32, learning the seasons and times of God. Now, God is eternal. In the kingdom of heaven, time passes, but there's really, there are there seasons? It's, it's yes, sort of. Time does things pass, they happen, but they're not like the seasons here on earth. These are a shadow of the seasons, the changing, the time, what happens in the spirit realm. So you have to study. Number 33, to learn how to pick up your cross and follow him. What You got to kill some things in your life. You got to sacrifice yourself. Many of your things that you're doing must die and you must do it willingly. Maybe for others. Maybe for your spirit to be more alive. And then you follow him to death. Mm -hmm. But you got to learn what all this means. Number 34. To know what the promises of God are to you. In his everlasting covenant. And to your children. And to your children's children. Lot to learn there. That's a other knows another whole series of teachings I'm working on. The everlasting covenant. Yeah, that's a whole nother one. Number 35, to learn what the promised land is and how to live in it. I mean, you're not in the promised land? No. Yes. No. Is the spiritual garden of eat the promised land? Yes. Is it going to be on the earth? Bigger than this? Yes. Is it the kingdom of heaven? Yes. What is the kingdom of heaven versus the world? These are all topics that your teachers and preachers and counselors need to be teaching you slowly, word by word. Number 36. And to allow the Holy Spirit. Do you know who that is? You don't? Well, that's another series I'm going to be offering the Holy Spirit to work in you, with you, through you, for you, until you are complete, mature, and able to express the true image of the Father and his likeness, agape love to others, as Christ Jesus did in every situation. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of work to do, a lot of growing, developing, learning, practicing, taking tests, failing for sure. Number 37, to be one with the Father as he was with Christ, who was in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number 38, learning how to rightly divide. That means understand the word of God takes time you see this is like the word of god it's multiple it's complex it's interwoven it's moving it has so many parts <sighs> it's a lot to study but this sort of represents it number 39 learning what god has planned for your life in his kingdom here on earth and now like what you're learning about pastor deborah out into the galaxies. All the other solar systems have creatures. You might call them aliens. Mm -hmm. What is his plan for you against the satanic kingdom of darkness and demons? What is his plan of life for you here with other humans and nature? Do you know yet? Well, you have to learn. Got to study. Number 40, learning what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are and learning how to use them spiritually 
for ministry for the kingdom. They operate with rules and laws with your spirit. Your spirit has to be ready. You can't activate them. They're not yours. They come to your spirit to help your spirit do spiritual ministry in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Got to learn how to be ready. Got to understand them. Now, there's a lot of teaching out there, but most of it is not correct. When I started moving in the spiritual gift called discerning of spirits, I could see and hear people's thoughts. And I thought maybe, oh, dear, I'm having issues. But I read a few other people did the same thing. So I go, okay, I ain't mentally ill. I'm not hearing voices like some people are. But I knew Jesus Christ heard people's thoughts, perceived them, could hear them thinking. So I said, once I knew that he did, I'm okay. Number 41, learning what the Garden of Eden is. It's his place of his pleasure and delight here on planet Earth. But it's really not on planet Earth. It's sort of off of it. But it is near. But it's in the realm of the spirit. That's where we are. And so I want to end right here today because this was a lot. So let's review. One, you need to study and be a student, a disciple, so that your work and your ministry can be approved by God. And you won't be ashamed of what happens. Your prayers won't be unheard. Your petitions won't be unheard. What you do, it, it accomplishes the goals of God. You need to learn what your carnal mind is. What is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life? How did they come to be? What is the natural mind? Is that the biological mind? Is that the biological brain? What's a spiritual mind? What's the mind of Christ? How do you get it? Yes, your spirit learns. It's, it's in a being. It has to learn and develop new concepts and principles and thoughts, and even new images. What are seasons and times of God? How to learn how to endure all things in the Lord, even probably your death one day. Mm -hmm. And loss and depression. How to learn to pick up your cross and follow him. To know what the promises of God are, his everlasting covenant to your spirit are. What does he say about the future of the earth and your physical body? Where is the promised land? Is it here on earth? Is it a real place? What is it? Also, you have to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to help you. Some people are afraid of him. They don't want him around. <laughs> He might do something weird. They might lose their professional identity or not make any money. Learn what the true image and likeness of the Father is. Mm -hmm. To be one with the Father, what does that mean? One in spirit, one in mind, what? Learning how to rightly divide and understand the word of God yourself. So you don't have to go to prophets. I don't go to prophets, never have. Because God talks to me himself, right from his word, through movies, through many ways. He'll send an angel. If he needs to, he'll show up in your living room, your bedroom, personally. Christ Jesus will show up and talk to you. He can take on any form, but he usually comes what he looks like. So you have to test the spirits. They might be Satan and the demon trying to pretend like they are God and Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. God does not come as goddesses. He doesn't send Mother Mary. It's either the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. So if you're talking to Mother Mary, you're not talking to God, you're not talking to Christ Jesus, you're not talking to the Father. You're talking to something else. Learning. What God has planned for your life in and through his kingdom and with his kingdom. 
and what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are, how you use them, what they're there for. And as you can see from this motion video, it's a lot. They're all interconnected. They're working. They're building foundations in us. They're concepts, ideas. They're creating new neurons of light and truth in our spiritual mind. They help us see spiritually, hear spiritually. They bring healing and deliverance. It's a lot. So become a student, a disciple of spiritual knowledge of God. He will teach you the truth about your enemy, Satan and his demons, how they affect us, what they're doing here on the planet. Mm -hmm. So you be encouraged today. The Holy Spirit, our teacher, is here to help us. And we welcome everybody from every galaxy. Mm -hmm. Every creature. Now, the demonic spirits, they already know all of this. Some of it they didn't see until the cross. Then it was revealed. You don't think God, he already knew they were going to turn and try to usurp him and have a mutiny. He didn't tell them everything. But all of creation is beginning to see and hear, and he is unfolding himself. Each little triangle dot line, every little thing of his image and likeness, slowly being unfolded to us, revealed, shown to us. And he'll help you through nature, through cartoons and books and artwork and songs, poems, life circumstances, history and documentaries, ancient civilizations, science fiction movies, fantasy movies. That's right. He will not waste anything to help you. But first you have to decide, I need to learn. I need to be a student spiritually. My spirit needs knowledge and truth and light. And I have none. Mm -hmm. And you need spiritual parents in your life. They might be pastors or shepherds, teachers or friends that will spiritually feed you the truth. Sort of like Pastor Deborah, you can get it from anyone. God will work through animals if he needs to. Nature, he wants to help you to understand, to see and believe in the realm of the spirit. Where he's at, for he's a spirit. And he's after your spirit to worship him in spirit, in truth and knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's the spirit work we're doing here. That's inside your physical body. Mm -hmm. Is your spirit your soul? No. Your spirit is the forever person, that part of you that lives on after death. Your soul is a part of your biological brain. The chemicals, the thoughts, the concepts, that life that was formed in the world, not the spirit. But they're both there. And they both need understanding. And you need to understand your physical body and how it fits into this. You are three that are one. But you are one that are three. And inside your mental health and your spirit, you could be multiples. Have created and imagined that you are many to help survive. So you're many who are one. But you're one who are many. And I asked God years ago about people with multiple personalities. Why do they have them? He said, because I am a multiple. Sometimes I'm a judge. Sometimes I'm a God. Sometimes I'm a father. Sometimes my mother's side comes through. I am many. I am whatever you need me to be. I'm a teacher. I'm a soldier, a warrior, a captain of the host of heaven, a king. So he is many, but he's one. So he gave that ability for us to think, and so we are. The power of words you must study, the power of imaginations. You must become a student of the kingdom of heaven and God and all of his truth and his light. So let's end here in part 
number seven. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing all of these wonderful living creatures from the far galaxies, from beyond our sight, from billions and billions of light years away. Thank you, Father, for you are about your work. You created them too, and all the lands and solar systems and planets that they live on. Father, we know the enemy's probably there also. Mm -hmm. Just like what we saw in the movie, John Carter, were upon the Mars planet. There were bad guys, evil things. There were gods and goddesses. A mess. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yet, Father, you love them also. Not the bad ones. Not the evil spirits from Satan's kingdom. Father, help us to become students and disciples worthy that our work may not make us ashamed in front of you. Help us to rightly divide your word and understand it. Father, give us teachers that will teach us truth, not religion, not tradition, not culture, but through the eyes of the Spirit with the mind of Christ, and as the Holy Spirit teaches us, help us. We need everything you got. Make us new creatures in Christ from by believing in the cross of your son and his sacrifice, not his suicide, but his sacrifice of love for you and for us. Help us, Father, to become new creatures through that sacrifice, creatures of the light, creatures of your kingdom, creatures of knowledge and truth, creatures that need learning and growing, spiritual parents and in our lives to help us, nurture us, teach us, and grow us. Father, help us every way you can, through all means, because of your great love for us, agape love. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, I'll see you in part number eight of spiritual discipleship. Bye.